Empty Radio, Angry Salad. Oh, I'm so angry. Before that, we had um, Squirrel Nut Zippers with You're Driving Me Crazy. And boy, was that a fabulous five song if I ever heard one. All right, coming up in just uh, two short minutes or so, or less, <laughs> we're going to talk to uh, Bradley Richardson, author of Job Smarts for 20 something So. If you're going through Eastern right now, UConn, any uh, any type of schooling right now, and you're saying, "Wow, this is great! I'm getting an education." But what do I what do I do after the party's all over? It's a scary world out there. Yes. So uh, we'll talk to him, and maybe we'll get some clues on what you can do. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Let's say your in-laws are staying for the weekend. No big deal. Then the weekend turns into a week, then a month, then a year. Tell me you wouldn't do something about it. Well, there might be a much more unpleasant guest sticking around your home. Radon gas. The second leading cause of lung cancer is a problem in one out of every 15 homes in America. It's colorless, odorless, radioactive, and your health risk increases the longer you're exposed to it. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON for information on a simple home radon test. The in-laws, you're on your own there. Sponsored by the Consumer Federation of America. And WBCS Willimannic. Cadger, blue gamma grass, bobcat. All of these plant and animal species are part of the Northern Great Plains prairie dog ecosystem. Coyote, elk. The prairie dog ecosystem has been reduced to less than 2% of its historic range. Great Plains narrowmouth frog, crown plum. Predator Project is working to stop the destruction of this vital habitat. Mountain plover, mule deer. Call Predator Project, 406 587 3389. Middle East Sedge. This message brought to you by the Predator Project and WECS Willimannic. Something different indeed right here, WECS. We have dead air again. No. We're having technical difficulties tonight. That's okay. It sounds like dead air to me, but it's not to you. On the line right now, we're going to talk to Bradley Richardson, author of Job Smarts for 20-somethings. How are you doing, Bradley? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me tonight. It's great to have you here. We definitely need your advice and your opinions on this subject of uh, what do people do when they graduate? Well, they either pray or panic or <laughs> a little something both. like that. A little of both. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of folks there uh, in your area here who are, are hitting the panic button right now or looking forward to next few weeks when they can get started with everything but mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty tough it's pretty tough out there for a lot of people who are graduating or who are considering maybe a summer internship and and hopefully those are some of the things that i, I talk about in my book job smarts for 20 something what's uh how's the job market out there right now well it's it's interesting i mean you see the statistics that say that college recruiting is up this year they say it's up about six percent and that's and that's good but uh, the thing is what uh, what that translates to is there are more companies are going to fewer campuses. Yeah, they're taking more people and hiring more college students, but the problem is they're going to fewer campuses to get them. And so it's leaving a lot of folks at certain schools who, who don't make a cut out in the cold. The other thing is that there are plenty of jobs out there, but, not nece but necessarily all the jobs aren't something that you want to do either. Uh, I mean, I'm based out of Dallas, and you know, you drive uh, almost anywhere here, and there's help wanted signs, and there are things that you can do, but they're either low-level uh, service position, something like that. And uh, so a lot of people, after spending four or five years in school, don't really think, hey, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to school to work at Boston Market or anything. So it's difficult to, to find quality careers out there. Um, but I think what I recommend to a lot of college students is to really look long term at what you're going to learn early on in that position. You might not be doing the most glamorous thing in the world, but what's it going to teach you? I mean, basically what uh, someone told me when I graduated from the University of Oklahoma was take a job that pays you 15 grand, but teaches you how to make a million. Mm -hmm. What percentage of uh, grads do you think uh, end up working at McDonald's? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't have a, an exact stat on that one, uh, how many work at McDonald's. But what's interesting is in America today, you have 48 million Americans in, the, in their 20s. Right. And of that, 35% of them are underemployed. Don't know how many are at Mickey D's, but you have 35% of Americans in their 20s who are do, working at some type of McJob job that doesn't require the degree that they've worked so hard on and or spent so much money earning as well. And that's probably one of the most alarming statistics right there. 
and that's why I, I stress to a lot of students, it's so important to go ahead and start your career early. And I don't necessarily mean working 40 hours a week, but I mean thinking about your career now. And for someone who's listening tonight who might be a sophomore or junior, boy, you really need to take advantage of, of the opportunities to get summer internships, and, and even internships or co-ops during school as well, because that's what's going to set you apart. It's not your degree. Okay. Uh, what's the most prominent fields to get into right now? Uh, lottery winner looks good. <laughs> Uh, the most prominent field. It's funny, I just finished a book and uh, turned it in a couple of weeks ago. It's released in September, but it's the Job Smart's Guide to 50 Top Careers. And what I did was profile 50 different careers that people uh, ask about frequently. And, uh, you know, of course, high tech. High tech is always, uh, it's the darling right now that everybody wants to go into. There are mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities for not only engineers, but computer science people, and also for marketers, public computer relations geeks. folks just a lot of uh, marketing folks, a lot of things that you can do in the high-tech arena. Same thing with health care as well, and I'm not just talking about being a nurse or a doctor, but whether it's a therapist, whether it's an administrator, uh, anything like that looks lucrative as well. Uh, other financial services is big right now, too, and uh, you have this convergence of insurance companies, uh, mutual fund companies, and brokerage houses. Uh, and banks who are all coming together and kind of offering similar services and trying to find their own niche. There are a lot of opportunities there. But what I think is probably the most interesting opportunity out there, and it's funny because a lot of people hear this and they go, oh, my God, there's no way I want to do this, food service and the hospitality industry. Now, a lot of people think, oh, my God, I didn't go, I didn't go to college so I could you know, work in a restaurant or wear a hairnet. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about that. But in doing the, stu the studies for this book, I discovered that managers, general managers at certain restaurant chains, and we're not talking about McDonald's or fast food restaurants or anything like that, but like a Chili's or a, you know, a Outback Steakhouse or Houston's or something like that. Right. These people, at about five years, five to seven years out, can be pulling between eighty and one hundred and twenty grand. Nice. Well, yeah, which is a lot. Which is funny because I, you know, I was doing my section on architects, and it's funny because there's a. A big, a big swing in pay there between someone who's, say, an architect and someone who's managing uh, a, a very profitable restaurant. So look in that. It's not just always you know, slinging hash or waiting tables. It's, it can be some other opportunities there as well. How much does uh, the average grad start out with? Of course, not eighty to 100000 but No. Maybe, it may be in debt for student loans. <laughs> but uh, it, the, the salaries vary depending on what industry you're in. Uh, something like, say, communications, like public relations, advertising, something like that, you're going to have a range. And, th and this varies wildly depending on what part of the country you're in, too. Mm -hmm. and where you all are at, uh, in the northeast, salaries are going to be a little bit hot or swing towards the higher end. I'm in the, the south and southwest, and so they're, they're much lower. But in advertising and such, you're looking at anywhere between, say, 16 to 22, something like that. In engineering, engineers are they—they they are at the top there as far as how much they make uh, in entry-level positions, and they average somewhere between thirty-six to thirty-eight thousand. Wow, I know teachers do do the best up here in Connecticut. They start off about twenty-nine. Wow. Yeah. That's great. I mean, in teaching, that's one other field that is very hot right now. In that, and it's funny because I know that in in states like Ohio, uh, it's very hard to get a teaching job. Uh, there are a lot of uh, very qualified people up there and people who are coming out of the teaching colleges, but they can't find jobs yet. Uh, like here in Texas, for example, there are plenty of teaching jobs. It's pretty easy to get. And then there are certain fields and specialties within teaching as well. For example, there's a big shortage of male teachers, of, um, especially male science teachers as well, and of coaches. Uh, there's a shortage of bilingual teachers as well, particularly Spanish and uh, or those who speak Spanish and English, and then also special ed teachers as well. If you teach special ed, you can pretty much write your ticket. Yeah, they're pretty much they're changing the whole curriculum of schools. It seems so. They're they need more of those type of teachers, especially yeah. down there where they need definitely a lot of bilingual teachers. <laughs> oh, definitely, <laughs> especially where I'm at. Yeah. But it's something that you know, you're finding the the trends and the demographers say that uh, in the next ten years. Uh, almost half the population is going to be Hispanic or some type or Latin or something like that. One of the Spanish speak or Spanish speakers. Mm. So it's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, if you're thinking about teaching, that's one way to go. Okay. 
Um, are there any misconceptions that students have about the real world? Oh God, where do I you know tell? We are until about eleven tonight. <laughs> I know that when I started my career uh, just about seven years ago, uh, I had plenty, and I think that you know they're neither right nor wrong, uh, good or bad. But I think that educators and uh, school in general doesn't do a great job of preparing us for how to become a young professional or to work, really. And that's regardless of what industry you're in. I think I, whether it's teaching or insurance or high-tech or entertainment, teaching is probably the one that does the, the field that does the best simply because you have to be a student teacher, so you know what it's like mm -hmm. uh, before you get into it. But a lot of times in some career services departments at colleges are better than others. But for the most part, you know, some of them who are not very aggressive, they just teach you how to write a resume, not to pick your nose in an interview, and they send you on your way. But there are a lot of things that uh, they don't tell you, not only about finding jobs but about once you're working, that I put it in Job Smarts for 20-somethings. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that we don't realize, or recent grads don't realize, how important communication skills and how important your contacts and relationships are. And so if you go in and you try to speak ebonics in an interview, interview, and it probably won't work, right? <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not just full blown ebonics, but we're talking about simple. You know, every college campus. I don't know what what the the slang du jour is on your particular campus, but every every campus does. I mean, whether what they call someone who's a geek, what they call someone who's a partier, whatever word, and it changes every three or four years. Right. But you go in, and that's all you're around. I mean, during the day, you're around your friends, you're around people in your fraternity, sorority, or whatever, and so you're just used to speaking that way. And you're also used to, to saying the, the filler words or phrases like, like you know, know what I mean, know what I'm saying. Hey, man. That, hey, man. That dude. Dude's a good one. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just suck. Yeah. I mean, suck is a, just an everyday word now that people use, but you go in an interview and you start rolling that stuff off, or pissed off is another one. You can't, you can't really say these things initially in an interview. Right. you got to show them that you're, you're serious. Yeah, at least be able to conjugate a verb. Right. And uh, that's something that you really have to practice. I mean, it's, it can be a killer. Mm -hmm. uh, people really count the times, let's like say in an interview. In an interview situation, everyone's going to be nervous. But it's pretty no noticeable if you're sitting there and between answering questions, you're, uh, and, uh, you know. I talked to one employer, and they were interviewing someone, and the person they were interviewing said, you know, so much, that the person, the interviewer, finally stopped and goes, no, I don't know. <laughs> so it's something that it takes a while to get used to to break yourself of that habit. And one good way to do it, you feel like, like, like a dork doing it, but just practice. Practice on your own. Practice in the car. Practice going on a mock interview. Take a friend who you trust and won't laugh at you. And just get in a room and start asking each other questions. Even tape record yourself. And you'll feel like a dork, but you know, you'll be a dork with a job. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, Bradley Richardson, you have the book Job Smarts for 20-somethings. Is there a number they can anybody can call if they want to get a hold of this book? Or? Absolutely. They can find the book Job Smarts for 20-somethings in all major bookstores. You can find it at Borders, Barnes & Noble, anything like that. You can also call 1-800-JOB-SMARTS as well and order it. It's only 13 bucks, so it's less than a CD. You can afford that. And the other thing that I'd like to invite your listeners to, I'm sure many of them have access to the web. Of course. So go on and go to www.jobsmarts.com. It's just jobsmarts.com. You can check it out. You can read some excerpts from the book, some columns, get some tips. And most importantly, you, if you have a question or concern about what you're going through in your job search, whether it's uh, something you're ha that's happening now or about an internship or anything, you can ask me, and we will get you an answer within a week on that, too. So that's feel great. free to do that. Jobsmarts.com. Okay. Thanks a lot, Bradley. And if I uh, hold on the line, uh, I'd like to talk to you off the air. Sure. Okay. Thanks a lot, Bradley. Thanks. All righty. Bradley Richardson, Job Smarts for 20-somethings, and I'll give out the phone number for you in the... Uh, the email and all that www stuff for you. 843, this is something different. WECS, Willimantic.